how to use Photopea to mask images and use these to create unique colouring pages for either KDP or Etsy printables. Hi, I'm Kerry from Dream Creative B and welcome to my channel where we show you how to make money online with KDP low content books, Etsy and affiliate marketing with new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button down below. So today I am going to show you how to actually use Photopea to mask images and then you can be taking these images and putting them either into a low content content book that you can sell on KDP or create it as an Etsy printable or even sell it as a printable in your own store on Shopify or WooCommerce or Groovecart. So why are we using Photopea? Because it's actually free and it opens up so many different file types from PSD files, XD, PDFs as well. So if you get a template from either Tangent Templates or BookBolt or any other template company out there that gives you it as a PDF, you can actually be coming in here and editing and putting the embezzlements and changing them right inside Photopea. So that is another great reason why to be using it. So let's just pop across to Amazon. Now Amazon has got plenty of coloring pages and I typed in animal pattern coloring books for adults and there are some there. Now it's actually saying that the um, Competition is probably too high at 26%. There is over 30,000. But if you have a look at these, there's only a couple that actually are pattern colouring books. There's two there. This is not a pattern colouring book. That is, that's quite beautiful. And it's not something that we can probably replicate without hand drawing. But the others we can. This is nice um, flowers and animals, but it's not the sort of internal. That is what we're looking to achieve. So these are the ones they not. That is mandalas, but mandalas are being done to death. But you can actually be putting these mandalas inside animals or other types of things that you can create patterns with. So there are ways you can be doing this. So as we can see, there's a few here. There's a few that's just simply not right, like cat butt but look how well it's selling. But it's not actually what I'm looking to achieve. So that's a beautiful colouring in book, but it's not, again, it's just beautiful, nice, simple patterns, very similar to the Joanna Basford sort of styles. Nice, simple, easy to colour in, which is really nice, but there wasn't what I was looking for. This is more like what I'm looking for, which is to take some animal sort of colouring in like that and create different animals that you then can then place them in a different background to even make them more unique. So this is another one from the same company. Again, different. So it's got colouring test pages, animals on their own, and that's it. So what I did is I went along to Pixabay, tried to find some patterns. I didn't find any patterns, but I did find some good silhouettes for animals that I could use. So if I could spell silhouette, it's a silhouette and animals. And you can only use the black ones that are completely filled in. Anything that's like got white and black lines, the actual image will go inside the black lines rather than that's too detailed. That could be a nice embellishment along with another colouring image. This could be nice to create something different. So there's all sorts of things that you can be grabbing and using. But I then went to create a fabrica. And here I typed in pattern colouring pages because I wanted something a bit different. And I did actually find, and why I wanted colouring pages is because I wanted different styles. And I wanted it in black and white for colouring because I'm going to put them inside some of the animals. So that's what you can do. So both of those links will be down in the description. If you've got an account with Creator Fabrica, this is how you should be using it to create your own unique ways of doing things. So we've had a look here and these are the different ones we've got. So I downloaded some of these patterns to try and use into my graphics. And when I downloaded them, they actually came out as PDFs. But I still quite like them. So I thought I'd give it a go and see if I could actually use them within. So I also 
got hold of some other patterns as well, some more simpler ones. So we'll do the simple ones first so I can show you how it actually works. And there's some more here. As you can see, there's all sorts of different types here that you can be using. And there's a henna design as well. So, and then I got hold of some elephants and I got hold of some giraffes that I thought I might try and use as well. But the whole problem is they're all together. So let's try it out. So let's go back to Photopea and this is simply Photopea here. It is, I'm just going to move it so you can see it. All the tools and everything are here and why it's free is because it's got all this advertising here and you can actually pay to get rid of the advertising. It's like an app on your phone where you can pay to have the adverts removed, but they're not in the way and they're making money with AdSense. So good for them. And they're giving us a great free tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up the giraffes. I'm going to go for the PNG ones. And I think I'll go for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lasso tool here and I'm going to select that lasso tool and I'm actually going to go right around it and it should select and I'm going to command C or control C and then I'm going to go file new. So I've copied it and now I want it onto a new project and I'm going to choose letter eight and a half by 11 because that's the most common size in America. It's the most common size for KDP print for coloring books if that's what you wanted to do. And I'm making sure that my background is transparent. I'm going to click create and then I'm going to command V. And there is the silhouette of my giraffe. Now what I want is I want one of these patterns, but I want the one that is actually a PDF. So what I'm going to do now, in fact, I'll do the simple one first and then I can show you how it works with the PDF. And I'll also show you with the elephants because that needs changing. So we'll go for one of these flower pages here. Go for a nice that one's quite filled. So here we've opened this up. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click this selection tool, which is here, this plus, the arrow and the plus. And I'm going to drag and drop into my new project. And literally, it fits on there. Now, I might want to shrink it a bit so that the flowers aren't as big. So what I do is I go to edit and I go to free transform. There is a shortcut keys, but um, and I've shrunk it down so I can actually see these little bars here. Bars, should I say squares? So it's filled up my whole image now. So I'm quite happy with that. And then what I'm going to do, the background is actually locked. Just click here. And I'm going to double click on the lock to unlock it. And it's taken that lock away. Then I'm going to go back to background. I'm just going to simply right click and I'm going to click clipping mask. And as you can see, it's gone into the elephant, but I need to add a bit more to that so you can actually see it. So I'm going to click on back onto elephant. I mean, giraffe on the giraffe. And then I'm going to right click there, blending options and stroke. I think I'd know what animals were. <laughs> I lived in Africa for quite a while. <laughs> so I've clicked on stroke and here you can actually change your color type here by clicking on here and it actually gives you different color pickers. And you can also change your stroke size as well. You see, we don't want it too big because it gets carried away. We don't want it too small either. See what five is like. That's quite a nice, strong color to define it. 
So that is our first one. I also did this showing you how to do it in PowerPoint, how to actually fill in an image in PowerPoint. The only thing with PowerPoint is you can only use shapes and SVGs that can be converted to shapes. But if you want to check that video out, it'll be in the top right hand corner and the link will also be in the description. So that's our first picture that we've created using this sort of style. So let's go on and create one with an elephant this time. So we click open. And let me just go back. And I'm going to go in here, not there. I'm going to go to the elephants. This time it's only a JPEG. Now the PNG was great because it had already got a um, transparent background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this background transparent before I do anything with it. So I'm going to click on it. So let me just make it a bigger image so you can actually see. And I'm going to click on this magic wand tool down here and I'm going to click. Now it should give some running ants. Now you probably can't see that. I can barely make it out. And then I'm going to press either backspace or delete depending on what computer you've got. And it should now give me a transparent background. But I've still got the running ants and I need to get rid of that. So you either press Control D or Command D. And what that does is it just deselects the selection from the magic wand. So I want this elephant here I think I don't know I want one of them so I'm going to get the lasso tool and I'm actually going to try and draw around it with my mouse without cutting into any of the others which I've managed to do and then I'm going to command C and copy and again I'm going to open up a new image again make sure it's transparent make sure it's 300 dpi and making sure that it is a letter and again you can change these if you want a smaller coloring page like an a5 which is a six six by nine ish size it's slightly different but you can use that that is definitely not that size so i'm going to go back so sometimes there are funny things here so make sure it's on the letter transparent click create and it's done the right size for me. And I'm going to Command and V. Now, as you can see, it is tiny. So we're going to change that. So we're going to go to Edit again, Free Transform, with the shortcut keys are there. We can never remember them. But because it's locked, I've got to go back here. And it's locked. We know it's locked because it's got a padlock. All I do is double click it, and it takes that off. And then I can go to my Free Transform tool, and I'm going to move it up a bit let me edit free transform i'm going to hold the shift key down and see if that that keeps it in so it doesn't go like a free shape it doesn't go off kilter and give me a funny sized out of perspective elephant so i've got that and I'm quite happy with that. So what I want now is I want one of these patterns. But again, like I said, it, it all comes in PDF. So I think it was one of these I wanted. So I'm going to open. We'll open that one. And you see, I've got my options there. But what I want to do is open it here. Open. And this is photo P, like I said. So I'll go file and open. And I'm going to go back to images. I'm going to select this one. So you can choose any of these, but you've got to actually make sure that you were clicked on the layer. As you can see, there was 10 pages in the PDF and it opened up. So you can actually be adjusting, changing, putting embezzlements on if you get any templates, like from Tangent Template or Book Bolt or any of the other template people that provide them as PDFs, you can be coming in and changing it this way. OK, so I like number 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on 10 and make sure that that is selected. Once that is selected, all I need to do is click on the move tool, go to 10 and actually drag and drop it to my elephant. And it's here in my elephant. And again, just go to free transform, hold the shift key down and drag it that way and drag it that way. 
So it just fills it in. It doesn't matter that it's oh, got a tail that's not quite in. And then what I'm going to do is again right click down to clipping mask. And my elephant's gone in, and again, it's not outlined. So we right, -click, we go back onto the background, right click, blending options, click on stroke, make sure that this has come up, and then click OK. And that, I might reduce that blending option. Let's go back. And I might actually bring that back down. I might bring it down to three. Three seems quite a nice number. And there we have our elephant that we have created using a PDF and a JPEG this time. OK, I want to show you what happens if you have a PNG image and it's got a clear background how to actually make it so that it'll work. So if we go to file and open, we've got a unicorn that's a PDF not a PDF, a PNG. And we're going to open that up. But we've also got a mandala or a Zen doodle that I want to use. And the problem with it is it has a transparency background, but I actually want to use that in. Now, if I use this in straight away, um, so if I take the move tool and put it in here, and I'm not going to expand it or anything. And I do clipping mask. It's gone inside, but it's not got a white background. So what I need to do is I need to actually go back here and I need to flatten this, ooh, flatten this image. So all I did was right click on it. Then I'm going to click and move. And I can't click and move because it's locked. So I just click on the lock. Click there, again, move. And then I put it in. And again, I can edit and adjust things. So free transform. Just to make sure it all fits in. All the bits that I want. Fill everything in, but we'll see. And then what I do is right click, clip in mask, and then that should go in. So if you're background is transparent because you can actually do file and open a place but it doesn't actually work if the background is transparent so again let's go to blending options click on stroke keep it at three and click ok and that is how to do masking or adding a image inside another image inside Photopea which is free and you can do it with PNGs you can't do it with PNGs in PowerPoint, but you can do it with this. And like I said, you can actually open up um, PDFs and you can actually be using PDFs inside Photopea. I hope this video has helped you see how easy it is to use Photopea for you to be able to create unique colouring books that you can either be creating for KDP as a low content book or colouring sheets that you can be placing on Etsy or your own store to sell as printables. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, go and watch the video again or ask questions in the comments. Over on the right hand side, there are some training and review videos. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to be notified about any new videos on my channel.